QCT is Quality Circle Tracking. It is the database that we utilize to register our quality circles, register our themes, and update our uh, progression of our theme activities. So looking into QCT on the Home Sheet tab, there's some information on there. And there's some multiple sheet tabs that we have here on the top as well with useful information. Primarily, we're going to be looking at the first uh, three, the Home Sheet tab, Circles, and the Themes Sheet tab. So step one in our quality circle registration is we have to register a circle first. A couple ways we could do that. There's some quick links over here where we can do so. But I'm going to navigate to the Circles tab, so do it on the Circles tab. So once I click on the Circles tab, if you're looking for your quality circle or searching for it, you could use this top section up here to search your quality circle by the circle number, by the circle name, your cost center, or your department. For us, we need to add a new circle, so we're going to press this button, Add New Circle. There's some information that we have to fill out here on top. For example, our department, the cost center that the circle is going to be registering under, the circle type, same team is uh, team members that report to the same team leader, same group, team members that report to the same group leader, perhaps there are team members to report to different group leaders, or some other situation. So in this case, we'll press the same team. And here, you want to uh, uh, write in your circle name as the team decides what the circle name is going to be. We'll go ahead and uh, um, type in that circle name there. The circle start date, we would select the start date of when the circle started. The phone number, typically the phone number of the uh, advisor. And that's it for this top section up here. Now we have to add uh, members to the circle. So we'll press this uh, plus button to add a new record. In order to begin searching, we'll press this little brown magnifying glass icon. And then here we're going to enter the team member's ID. Press the brown search. Once it pops up the team member's ID, then we'll press select. And now you can see that team member ID is here in this field. We're going to select the member's role. And then here, add them to the circle. Okay, so the first one is added there. Let's go ahead and add two more. So we'll add a record. We'll press the brown button. Enter the employee ID. Press the brown button again to search. Select once the name pops up. Identify the, the member's role. And then add them to the circle. Okay, we'll do it one more time. And let's say that you have a uh, member, once you enter their, their PeopleSoft ID here, maybe it's not pulling anything up. So let's, um, let's type one in here. And then if we search, let's say we get this, uh, we get this error. Um, sometimes this will happen for team members that were hired after the work date to PeopleSoft conversion. So their PeopleSoft number doesn't match their workday number. So in this case, we need to search to find their workday ID, and then we'll enter their workday ID inside here. So th that um, button that we just pressed brings us to this page. In the top right over here, we're going to search for easiest way is their last name. Type in their last name there. And navigate to try to find to try to find the member that you're looking for. Here in the account name column, this is their workday ID that you want to enter into that search field. Okay, so once you have that ID, we're going to go back to QCT and we're going to enter their workday ID. If you already know their workday ID, then just enter it there. We'll press that button again. Once you see that team member, we'll select identify their role, and then add them to the circle. Okay, before we save this uh, setting, you want to um, click on the, the button uh, that is going to be the main contact person. So here, we're going to click on that. Usually, it's the advisor. And then we'll press Save. Okay, once we have added that record successfully, we'll press OK, and it's, it'll be the circle that's here on the top. So we see 8811, eight, uh, eight, eight, this is the circle number. Hold on to that number for your reference so you could uh, find your quality circles easier in the future. Okay, that's it. We just registered a circle. The next step after we do that is registering a theme. So once we register a circle, the next step after registering a circle is to register the theme. That's the problem that we're working on. We could do that from the themes tab. 
uh, but since we just registered a circle and our circle is here on top still, we're just going to go ahead and press this button on the right that says add a theme. But of course you could do that again from the themes tab. So once we add a theme, it brings up a different dialog box. We have the circle as a default. You'd want to uh, enter the theme name, the problem that you're going to be working on. Select the primary KPI and a secondary KPI if, uh, if applicable. What is the theme start date? And then we'll check the boxes of who, which theme members are going to be active in this circle. Once you've done that, we just press save. And we've just registered a theme. Now the theme is going to be here on top. Uh, circle number 8811, the theme number, the theme name, the KPI is the start date, the cost center. It shows that we're in a pre-work phase. We'll talk about that in the next section. If you just register the circle without registering a theme, the your won't get participation for your cost center for your department. So you have to register both the circle and the theme in order to get participation. Okay, the next section, uh, we're going to be getting into how to update uh, the steps as we progress through the quality circle activities. So we're on the themes page. The theme that we just registered is going to be here on top, but you could also search your theme by the circle number, the theme name, or the theme number. So you want to make sure that you hold on to those numbers and remember those numbers or write them down. Uh, okay, so we have our theme. It's going to be here. A couple different buttons you'll have over here. Edit if you want to edit the people that are on the theme. Uh, but the primary tab you're going to use is this view button. So I'm going to press the view button. And here you can see a couple different fields on the left. Theme members, activity records, theme steps, evaluation, and notes. So here for the first uh, one shows the theme members, the members that are on um, the, the theme. If you want to add or remove a member, you could do that with this button. But if you want to add a member, you have to add them to the circle first. And then you could add them to the theme. Okay. Um, the primary one that you're going to be updating is the theme steps tab. So the first section in the theme steps is the pre-work. Then we have the theme steps themselves and then the post-work section. So the first thing that we do is the pre-work. This is where you would enter the date of your pre-level assessment. So there's another video in this YouTube um, channel that has level assessment training. So refer back to that one if you're not sure how to do the level assessment. Here's where you enter the date of the pre-level assessment. The date of when we selected the theme. And the date of when we created uh, start and end date of when we created the activity plan. Uh, activity plan training is also in the level assessment training. So this would be... Um, the date that we did our activity plan. Okay, the first section is done, the pre-work section is done. The next section here is the theme steps. This would be updated as you start a step and as you end that step. So whenever you start a step, you would want to open up QCT and select the date of whenever you started it and then select the date of when you ended that step. After that, we would just press save. And by updating this, it'll keep our quality circle active. After 60 days of inactivity, then your quality circle theme will go to an inactive status. So um, you want to make sure that you keep your uh, quality circle active. One way, let's say it's taking a little bit long to do step two and it's taking longer than 60 days. You don't want your theme to fall into an inactive status. On the activity records tab, we'll click over here. You can add an activity. These activities could be, you could add an activity after every single meeting if you'd like, um, but I would say maybe add activities based on some maybe big big milestones that you had, like maybe you did some QCC tool um, training. That would be something good to do. And how long did that activity take and who participated in that activity? And you could save that. So by adding some activity on this activity record sheet tab, you could make sure that you uh, remain in that active status. Going back to the theme steps, let's say you're going to uh, work on all of these and, and uh, update these to start and the end date for all eight steps. After all of that is done, uh, the last thing down here is the post work. This would be the date of when you did the post level assessment. So it would just be clicking on that and into the date of when you did the post level assessment. And then you would save. 
After all of that is done, there's only one more step in completing the quality circle. Completion of the quality circle is done on the notes tab. After all of the steps are done, you'll need to add a couple attachments. One of them is the attachment of the eight step storyboard. Now that could be a scan copy of the storyboard. It could be a picture of the wing of your FMDS board. If that's where you did your quality circle, um, um, uh, theme. It could be pictures of the flip charts from your report out. That's fine. Um, but the first thing you need to do is add um, whatever that eight step, wherever you have that um, picture or image, add that attachment there by just clicking on that, navigating to wherever you had um, that attachment. And it would add that attachment there. Now there is a uh, two megabyte max for these attachments, so you might need to compress pictures if you're gonna be uploading pictures. Uh, so that's the fir first attachment is a QC storyboard. Second attachment is the attachment of the level assessment that you did. So scan that and then add that attachment as well. Up here, the notes tab, this section is intended to be notes from the assistant manager or the manager after the report out is done, just some comments to the team and we could save those, save those inside here. After that is done, that's it. That's how to close out the QCT.